Hi there, welcome to IndyCar on uh, 14th of December. You may remember yesterday I was talking about Stephen Flynn, MP, the new SNP leader at Westminster, and how he had said that they were looking at all potential options uh, for getting to independence. Well, that uh, comment seems to have been uh, a little bit of a, a prescient statement by the leader, because we learned today that uh, Stephen Flynn is planning to um, table a bill which will amend the Scotland Act in Westminster today. Now, I'd first of all thought that this actually was going to happen later on, in the week, but apparently the beginning of the debate is actually pretty much right now. Now, what's the point of this? Well, the, the Scotland Act in 1998 uh, currently says that the union or the constitutional question, if you want to put it that way, is a matter reserved for Westminster. Now, what Mr Flynn is proposing is a bill which would amend the Scotland Act 1998 to remove that particular power from Westminster control. And that would mean that the, um, the referendum would be allowed to be held under the existing um, legislation proposed by Holyrood. Now, it's a long shot, and everybody says, well, you know, surely it's just going to be outvoted, and I, I think probably that's the case. I don't think there is a huge likelihood or probability that this will succeed. However, what it does do is it gives parliamentary time to the subject of the Scotland Act and the removal of all access to democracy for Scottish voters. If it is voted down, which I would expect that it would be by the unionist parties in England, then it will be probably the last of the potential routes to independence to be closed off by the United Kingdom. And it will be done in the glare of full publicity since Westminster um, debates are televised live and the BBC would have a hard job justifying blacking out such a live debate, but they may well try it anyway, since they try to black out virtually everything else to do with independence. And speaking of independence, we often assume that Scotland is the only country in the United Kingdoms uh, which is actually striving for independence, and yet this is not the case. And I was speaking this morning uh, to a, a friend of mine who is an independence campaigner in Wales and he was pointing out to me that um, support for independence amongst Welsh Labour voters, and remember that the Labour Party is, is largely dominant in Wales and has been for many, many decades, but apparently there is now approximately 55% of the Labour voting bloc in Wales now in favour of Welsh independence. And that comes at a time when there is also a majority in favour of the reunification of Northern Ireland with the Republic of Ireland, where Sinn Féin now is in majority in Northern Ireland. And the only thing holding the entire ballot up, you know, the entire border poll up, which they have the legal right to have a border poll every seven years, but the only thing that's preventing it happening is the Democratic Unionist Party, which has refused uh, to share power with Sinn Féin in its elected Oh, with its elective representation at Stormont. Now, what the DUP is effectively doing here is refusing to participate in a parliament which has been democratically elected by the majority of people in Northern Ireland. And the majority of people in Northern Ireland have voted for Sinn Féin, not for the DUP. And because of this, the DUP is using a spoiling tactic, which is they're just simply refusing to participate in the power-sharing uh, government in Stormont. And that has forced the United Kingdom to step in and assert centralised London control. But that's not the end of the story, because now that they're in this bind, and basically the DUP has put all hopes of a border poll into limbo, effectively, by taking this action, the... Um, the border poll itself, although the, uh, the people of Northern Ireland are entitled to it every seven years, and I think it's long overdue actually for one, is still under the veto of the British Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, who gets to decide when and if such a border poll is warranted. So, as usual, the United Kingdom reserves the right to prevent any country within the United Kingdoms from voting to leave or to end the union with England. Now, this is interesting because we now have all three of the Celtic nations in favour of independence or reunification virtually at the same time. Stephen Flynn's action today, I think, will be the last chapter in a long series of potential routes to independence using what passes for democracy in the United Kingdom. 
And by doing this and by engaging in this debate and putting this bill forward in Westminster today, Mr Flynn is basically trying one last shot, one last tilt at the British windmill, if you like, where this is really, I think, the last democratic route, if you could call the Westminster Parliament democratic, where Westminster MPs get to vote on whether the Scotland Act 1998 should be amended to allow Scotland to have a referendum next year. Now, I would expect this bill to fail, but when and if it does fail, what will happen then is that is the very last piece of democracy that's available to the Scottish people through their representation at Westminster in order to have a vote about whether they wish to continue in this union of equals, this voluntary union that we are allegedly able to leave at any time we like, but nobody will tell us how to do it. It will be the end of that process because there is, I don't think, any shred of democ democracy left anywhere in the United Kingdom which would enable us to go. Another interesting thing today, and somebody passed a uh, comment to me recently about this, is that while all of this is still ongoing, the British state is trying to abolish the, human, the, the European Human Rights Act, which is what governs all our rights in the UK generally, including in Scotland, inside the United Kingdom. And because of this, if the United Kingdom is successful in pushing this bill through and it becomes uh, an act of the United Kingdom's parliament, then the British state will be able to control how much we can demonstrate, uh, how we demonstrate, how loud we can be, what we can say, how we behave, whether or not we're allowed to actually talk about things, and basically the entire gamut of uh, potential weapons for a country which is straining at the leash at the moment to leave a very unpopular uh, forced union, basically a colonisation, when we have no more democratic rights left with which to protest uh, or to take to the streets without the British state cracking down violently on anyone doing so. We're about to become a police state and the, uh, the new English Bill of Rights, or whatever the heck they are going to call this, uh, is going to replace all of our existing human rights. We will no longer be free to go and protest anywhere we wish. We will not be able to write certain things on placards. We will not be able to turn the volume up on a public address system. Uh, we may not be able to assemble freely in open public spaces. All of these things can be clamped down on. All of them can be subject to jail terms, to charges all of which is at the whim of Westminster and something which would curtail our, our entire uh, movement when it comes to taking to the streets, not only to protest, but the campaign for independence itself. All of which leads me to think that two years is an awful long time in which the British government has to get all of these new measures in place to prevent the Scots from having this kind of uh, demonstration capabilities. So we are looking now, I think, <coughs> at the end of days for the British Empire. The United Kingdom's, I think, is now on borrowed time. It's basically on life support. The only thing preventing the breakup of the United Kingdom's is, in fact, just one or two ministers who hold the veto over whether anyone is allowed to vote about breaking up the United Kingdom. Now, I use the word breaking up, but what happens when Scotland leaves the United Kingdom is the Treaty of Union would be repealed. In other words, the Union Treaty, which holds the United Kingdom's together, would just come to an end. And in that case, the United Kingdom would cease to exist. It would not be the successor state. It would be over. It would be basically the Kingdom of England, the Kingdom of, if you want to call it, the Kingdom of Wales, but the nation of Wales, and the nation of Ireland as a reunified country, all together, separated simply by the fact that the treaty would have, would have ended, and therefore all ties between the Celtic nations and England would be basically politically cut. And this is something, obviously, that the British state does not want to do. Now, something else which somebody hoped I would mention is how Scotland will deal with its oil companies uh, and how it will deal with its gas companies when it becomes independent. How will the changeover in sovereignty be handled? How will the Scottish government handle these companies? And I've made a few uh, potential suggestions on how this can be done. But I think the most simple way of doing this is in fact to 
pass legislation, which means that all domestic electricity, gas supplies, petrol, diesel, uh, and other derivatives from our fossil fuels, as well as our offshore wind and tidal energy, are fully um, regulated by the Scottish Government. We don't actually have to own the industries to control them, we just have to legislate to make sure that our domestic supplies of this energy is actually provided at cost price, leaving these companies, if they wish, to exploit the remaining potential they have for exporting the rest of it. The main thing is that Scotland has to benefit from its own resources, and that may be the first step to doing that. The other potential way would be to do it in two stages, to first of all regulate domestic supply in the way I've just described, as a part of a process where eventually domestic supply is then bought out by the Scottish state. In other words, that all the producers who supply uh, energy of all sorts from the North Sea and from the waters around Scotland to the domestic market are then owned by the Scottish people or owned by the state itself. And that would give us complete control over all of our domestic supplies. It's complicated, but basically the United Kingdom system is a system of licenses which allows the exploitation of these resources without any of the benefits flowing into Scotland or in fact even flowing into England in any appreciable amount. So, you know, we're in a situation where there are a lot of what-ifs at the moment. The main question I have now for Stephen Flynn is what will we do next when this attempt to amend the Scotland Act does not pass at Westminster? Where do we go from here? Because we're now faced with the potential of not having any way to vote to leave the Union or to end it or repeal the treaty. And for my money and my Welsh colleague shares this opinion, the next legal step and the next political step is to move from domestic British legislation, which is holding everything back and preventing democracy from taking place, to moving to international law and making uh, appropriate presentations to the United Nations in much the same way that the Bahamas did successfully over a period of two years before kicking the British state out of the Bahamas. So we have now just about reached the end of the line when it comes to any kind of British democracy. There just isn't any access to democracy for Scotland anymore. It's been stopped. It's been stopped in Northern Ireland as well by the DUP colluding with the British state to prevent a border poll from taking place in a lawful way at the end of the seven year period, which it should be right now, because the British state has the veto. Their Secretary of State can stop it from happening, delay it for as long as he likes, and justify it in any way he sees fit. On the other hand, the Welsh people are faced with this um, annoying and slightly embarrassing situation where they are probably going to be the last nation in this cluster of nations on the archipelago of the British Islands and Ireland who will actually get to uh, leave the Union with England and go their own way. They will probably be the last out of the door. But the way things are looking, at least politically and with the um, the, the movement behind it in Wales now reaching the same point that it has reached in Scotland, around about 55%. We're now looking at not just Scotland leaving the Union, but all of the Celtic nations ending their union with England pretty much within the next decade or so. So the writing is on the wall now. The question now is, what does the SNP do next in Westminster? Because I think they have now run the full gamut of all potential routes to independence. Uh, and Mr Flynn, I think, in his comment, was alluding to his action today in an effort to amend the Scotland Act of 1998, which I suspect is not going to work. It's the last roll of the dice, and there is nothing left in uh, British democracy which can be used because we're simply being prevented from having any access to democracy. Once this bill fails, this attempted amendment fails, then basically the gloves are off. Scotland is now not just a de facto colony, it is officially a colony of England. And it's an exploitation colony which is being plundered by the British state, with the resources of the Scottish people being sold off under licence to big basically big, big international corporations who have no accountability here in Scotland whatsoever. 
So that's basically where we're at at the moment. It was also alleged, I heard this morning, that Mr Flynn had made a comment about being prepared to work with ALBA in pursuit of independence. I, I can't verify whether this is true or not, and there's some argument over what he actually did say. But it is important, I think, that we acknowledge that there are two, as far as I remember, ALBA uh, MPs in Westminster now, and they need to be taken into the arithmetic as well when it comes uh, to any future efforts to gather all the elected officials of Scotland together in one place to make an approach to the European Court of Justice or the International Court of Justice or to eventually the United Nations. So we're at that end stage now, and I think everybody now agrees, particularly uh, my friend in Wales says that Wales is probably going to have to go the same way, it's probably going to have to go to the United Nations as well, seeking its independence in an international sphere rather than relying on the domestic um, delays and foot dragging of the United Kingdom to get the job done. Anyway, that's about it from me today. It's hard to tell how many of you are watching today because according to my my live views count at the moment, there's only 85 of you watching this show, and yet I know that that is generally speaking not the case. If you're having trouble with notifications because Facebook is basically manoeuvring all of these uh, buttons without your consent, you'll find that your uh, preferences have been changed without your consent. Go into your preferences, go into your notifications and reactivate them. If you're having trouble watching this program, find me on YouTube uh, under IndyCar Gordon. Uh, you can also find me sometimes on uh, LinkedIn as well. I post the show there sometimes as well. But the easiest way to see the program actually is just simply to come on to the IndyCar page that we're on at the moment and instead of watching live just go to my archive and you'll find the latest shows already uploaded pretty much straight away. If you find this show is cutting off as you're watching it, it's probably due to the fact that it's being uploaded as it's being broadcast and sometimes that means if you join late you don't get to see the whole program. So anyway, that's it for me today. Again, a big thank you to all of my fans who have recently donated to the crowdfunder. Thank you very much. That's made my Christmas a lot more secure and it makes it a lot easier for me now to make more of these broadcasts. In the meantime, stay optimistic and remember that we are now reaching the end of the available means of democratic uh, choice for Scotland. There is nothing really left for us to do in the United Kingdom now. And the next question is, where does the SNP go now? What is the next step in this journey towards independence? I'll see you soon. In the meantime, keep talking to people out there. Support is still rising slowly and steadily, and I think it will keep going particularly speak to your employers. If you are an employer, think about how your business is going to be affected by remaining in the worst performing economy in the Western world. I'll leave you with that thought. Bye-bye for now.